No. This is something that was known to us and we haven't addressed it so much in public or to do a vlog or a video on it, but it is um, a necessary subject matter to address concerning um, Malcolm X, Malik al Haj al Shabazz, and the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kadamawi Hala Selassie, Nagusa Negeze, Ethiopia, Siyum Exiabia, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Hala Selassie the first. King of Kings of Ethiopia, or called the Emperor, literally is King of Kings of Ethiopia, elect of God. That Malcolm X, Malik al Haj al Shabazz, was becoming Haile Selassie's disciple. Or, more better, according to the facts and the evidence that we have, had become, but at, at, at a Initial, we could say at an initial level, at least from the manifest um, evidence, the manifest evidence, the manifest document. Some of the some of the evidence that we'll point to as we hope to go into in more detail is publicly available, at least more so now. When we first had gotten some of the intel, some of the information on this, and we we've made intel out of it since then. But when we first had gotten some of the information. This is going back like to the 90s, like the 90s. Actually, we heard concerning Malcolm X, Elijah Muhammad, the Nation of Islam, from our earthly father, Rafiq Abdul um, Hamid. You know, we had gotten this information from our earthly father who was not a member, he was not a member of the Nation of Islam, but he had worked with, you could say, the Nation of Islam, one of his... Um, uh, part one of an article he had wrote, The Antiquities of the Black Race, was published in Muhammad Speaks in 1970. And since my earthly father had um, passed away roughly around 2009, before that time, he basically gave me permission to um, reprint the volume of his research and studies, which we have, and some of the brothers and sisters know about it, and, you know, we can speak about that as well but that's just a link with our knowledge um, of the nation of Islam and concerning Malcolm X and by extension some of the things that had went on regarding the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and we're not here really to speak on that aspect of it even though that connects with what we're saying here when we say that Malcolm X was becoming Haile Selassie's disciple, right? We say was becoming because we still see it in a kind of a formative process. And, and one of the proofs of that is, as you can see over here, oh yeah, give thanks to um, um, Sifawe Baleka, if we're pronouncing the brother's name correctly or pronouncing the name. I think it's the brother, um, the website, Sifawe Baleka. Um, dot com. There's some very interesting information that is found there, as you can see, join the OAAU. And see, that's that's one of the, you could say, one of the exhibits. That, that's, that's a powerful exhibit right there as well. Also on Rastafari TV, we see, I think it's one of the pictures where um, Malik Al-Hajj Al-Shabazz, a.k.a. Malcolm X, had, had gone to... Um, the what's called the Middle East, they call it the Middle East, but East Africa, and also from others who were first hand witnesses when he had gone to Ethiopia. He had gone to Ethiopia, and there is the unspoken facts that have been suppressed from the biography, the biography of Malcolm X that was, um, you say, written by. Alex Haley. There's a whole chapter. If you notice what's missing from the biography of Malcolm X by Alex Haley is more the detail of his going to, you know, we, we know a little about his going to Mecca and all of that, you know, and pilgrimage and certain places, but what has been suppressed from the public record, at least over here in the Americas, in the Caribbean, but mainly in the Americas and the Western world, America and 
you know, England, you know, is the dialogue and the um, formation, the background to the formation of the organization of Afro-American Unity Incorporated. So OAAU, we would have no OAAU if there was no OAU, right? And how is it that Malcolm X came up with the OAAU? And the facts of his going to Ethiopia, the facts of his Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie, um, earmarking millions of dollars right, toward this proposed organization, and the fact that none of this, these facts, have really reached the Western world, you know, black America and, and, and black peoples in the Americas and the Caribbean, and has not been news, partly mainly is due to what Alex Haley had done. You know, Alex Haley did the whole thing, Roots and everything. And then he also did the autobiography of Malcolm X and it had been reported um, through reliable sources that there was a whole chapter, a whole chapter of the biography, right? We can't say autobiography because it wasn't really Malcolm, you know, you know, writing it himself, but it was Alex Haley that had interviewed him, you know, at length maybe even ad, ad nauseum, you know, just, just a whole lot of interview. There was a whole chapter concerning Ethiopia, concerning what Malcolm X witnessed in Addis Ababa, right? Those who he spoke to there, um, the communications with Negus and Negus, the Negus, right? The Negus, really we, we pronounce it as Negus. Some say Negus, but the Negus, right? The king. But the Negusa Neges, Negusa Neges, the King of Kings of Ethiopia, there is a plethora, like nuff nuff, a, a lot of information that has been suppressed. And there was a whole chapter that was um, redacted from the biography of Malcolm X. And on reliable sources, this was put up in a safe. This was like put away. Now, I don't even know if the chapters, Alex Haley is dead, so who knows what has happened with his, um, you know, some properties and possessions that he has, whether this chapter is still somewhere being heavily guarded, whether it has been destroyed or not. But here's the key thing. We spoke to others on record. We have some of this on record, right? Um, because some of those individuals, some elders within the um, Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated community um, and the Rastafari community who were in Ethiopia right, from like say 60s, uh, 60, late 60s, 67, um, all through um, that particular time that Malcolm X had gone to, you know, the Middle East and had, we know about him going to Mecca, we know about the pilgrimage and what he said there. But then when he came forward from that visit, that journey, that eye-opening experience, he came forward and spoke about the organization of African-American unity. Now, it's, it's, it's a duh, like, you know, when people say duh, like it's, it's a duh fact that the OAAU came after the OAU and we would not have a OAAU if there wasn't a OAU. And then on top of that, to know that Malik Al-Hajj al-Shabazz, also known as Malcolm X, had gone to Ethiopia, had spoke to certain ministers, certain high-level um, Ethiopian individuals in the government, right? Also, certain ones within the Rastafari community as well, and also seen the great works that the OAU, whose, whose headquarters is in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and seen the unity, you know, the unity of what was happening over there, and then also receiving communication. Um, I think they said, some said that his Imperial Majesty was outside of the country at that time, was on tour or particular, you know, visit. But hearing that Malcolm X, you know, Malik al-Haj al-Sabaz was there and was inquiring concerning the OAU, 
and had made known his intent to do something similar or the same for black people in the Americas, right? Black people in the Americas, he was earmarked some millions of dollars. One reliable source say about $30 million or so. But then also, just to put this into the record, that some of the Ethiopian counterparts, ministers of the King of Kings government, were beseeching him and begging Malcolm X to not return just yet to America, to the West, but to stay in Ethiopia to build in order to found the OAAU in Ethiopia, in order to begin an off there, and then after you know laying the the the, the roots, the you know the, the the groundation, you know there, to then like bridge it to America, yet. Malcolm X, you know, having, you know, having his own mind and ideas, he was receptive to everything, but not receptive to stay in. It was also told to us that he was informed from some of the ministers in His Majesty's government and the intelligence services. You know, Ethiopia of the King of Kings had, you know, some really high level intelligence services, you know, had gotten wind of various different plots that were in formation, you know, against Malcolm X and had warned Malcolm X not to return, you know, it was not to return just yet, right? And since he already had made his intention to formulate the OAAU, Organization of Afro Afro-American Unity, along the same lines and bases, but to basically be, you know, um, like a, a bridge to meet with the OAU, right? So we can have this international, you know, we can say this international worldwide movement for the liberation of black peoples, especially in the Americas and the Caribbean, along with the liberation movements that were already underway at that time, at that time, time is everything, at that time on the continent of Africa. And since others had already gotten to know that this is what Malcolm X already had in mind. So when Malcolm X had returned from the East, and there's a, some videos um, where, where he's at the airport or he's being interviewed, he just returned, I think he's wearing the shiki, you know, he's not wearing the, you know, the, 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 the shirt, jacket, and tie, but he's in the shiki and he's at the airport and all the cameras are there and they put in the mics in his face and they asking him about, well, how was your journey, Malcolm? What had gone on, so forth and so on. And there's one particular video I recall seeing, I'd like to find that particular video again, where he divulges the OAAU, right? Because of what he had seen over in the East, particularly in Ethiopia, are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? See that link right there? That's a powerful link. Scripture, biblical, Amos 9 and 7. Are ye not as the Bene Kushim, the Bene Kushim unto me, O Bene, Bene Yisrael? And he had said, well, you know, to the fact of he's seeking to form this particular organization because of what he had seen with the OAU. I'm not going to say it was a wrap from there, but the intelligence services, the agencies, because the United States and the, the Western Gentile, Anglo-American intelligence services, they, they already knew, right? They already knew about these things, you know, because they were spying and following and so forth and so on, and they knew that he had, you know, reached Ethiopia, Africa, some parts of Africa, right? They knew certain things that he had spoken to certain ones, maybe not all the details, but they knew certain things, and... In addition to that, um, some of the Ethiopian, the imperial, the imperial government ministers, you know, and different ones were begging him, please don't return just now. All right? This is a, a great idea. This is this is what we need, right? To kind of bridge this gap, you know, with black people, Ethiopians at home and abroad to bridge this gap. You know, we need an OAAU. But form it here, have, you know, have the headquarters here. You know, was have like a headquarters here, right? Strengthen here, get that backing and support, 
right, of faithful, reliable people on the continent that has shown and proven during the reign of the Black Messiah, Kedemawi Hala Selassie, that we can begin and do this unity and liberation. That was the proof positive that we got to see in that time, right? After the godless and creeping coup, after the rebellion against the King of Kings that took place in Ethiopia, after the, the, the careless Africans had, had turned their backs against that, we, we get to see what has happened now, right? So even they even changed the name, you know, we, some of us were upset about them changing the name of the OAU, but then again, they had already changed, you know, you could say changed the, the covenant. They, they already had changed the covenant. They, they already had went astray from the teachings of the Black Messiah, the teaching of His Majesty, the teaching of Haile Selassie I, which had, in his times, he shall shoot, who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Proof, right? Proof. What has happened after, right, the visible reign of the King of Kings, the Black Messiah, is not, and I repeat, is not on Haile Selassie I, right? If our parents and our, you know, if, if I have a father or grandfather, right, who through blood, sweat, and tears has, has built uh, something great, Right, and they, in that sense, pass on or, or go forward. Right, now it's our turn up. We're the generation, we're the succeeding generation. And if we drop the ball, shame on us if we blame them, right, for how can you say, um, making the ball, making the court, you know, the rules of the game, playing the game, and, and winning the game during the time that they were at play. And if the if the ball falls on us, it's our responsibility. See, because there's, a, there's something bigger here. When we talk about black people and how come we can look back on those days, you know, and somewhat, you know, um, um, I, I don't even like to use the term romanticize, but you know what I'm talking about when I say romanticize, you know, nostalgize, you know, those days and everything. Say, so, oh, whoa, 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 you see what they were doing back then, so forth and so on. And, 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 and then we're looking for somebody to blame. Right. Well, those to blame definitely wasn't the king of kings of Ethiopia. Right. He sh he shoe and proved. Right. The elder of elders, as um, Pharaoh say that the brother from Pharaoh say that. Big up, Pharaoh say that. I hope he gets to hear this. If any of you know Pharaoh say that, please give him a link. Right. Please link us here. The L O J S dot O R G. We'd like to interview him on our podcast. Pharaoh say that a very good clip that he has that we sometimes share. You know, bits and bites of it where he speaks about, you know, how they diss, you know, a lot of the so-called people in the black con, con, con consciousness community. Not the real black consciousness community, but the black con consciousness community. Because, see, a lot of these facts, they don't even, I don't even know if they know these facts. And even if some of them know these facts, I don't know if they would even, you know, tell these facts. Because it will show and prove on them not not moving the right way, right? Not move. See this article over here, where his Majesty visits the uh, USA was 1950 to 54, where it says Emperor Selassie, the King of Kings, the Black Messiah, but Emperor Selassie links Negro, Negro with Africans throughout world. Now you hear some ain't right Israelites that would speak against all of this, oh, the Ethiopians and this, no. The ruling Ethiopians, we're talking about the Solomon, the Sheba, the Israelites of Ethiopia, according to even the covenant the guest, witness of Shem. All right? And that's one of the reasons why we can see within that particular time, that particular dispensation, that forward movement right, at home and abroad of black peoples, right? all from the roaring 20s. Right, nearly a hundred years ago, since we're what 2021 20, now, the roaring 20s, right, all the way to the mid 70s. After the mid 70s, coming to the 80s, the martyrdom of Burhan Selassie, Bob Marley, and then the martyrdom of Peter Tosh on what September 11th, right, right, you know, we can see what has happened in Ronald Wilson, Reagan, 666, all of that rising up, and 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 NWA niggas with attitudes. You know, we, we can see the, the the backsliding. But my people are destroyed, right? Perish. They're destroyed for what? Lack 
of knowledge. And this is a very important knowledge that Malcolm X was becoming, was becoming Hila Selassie, the first disciple, Hila Selassie I's disciple. All right. And see, that's an aspect of like who killed Malcolm, right? And the reasons why maybe certain ones, not just only in the, you know what has been said about the nation of Islam, but even more so the United States government. It was, it was um, what they call like triangulization. We'll, we'll, we'll get into that because often some of y'all know when we did our videos on on other platforms and everything, we you know we really went into not just not just spilling the tea, right? We're pouring the whole kettle. Right? Some people spill a little tea. No, we pour that whole kettle right here. You know, just just let's take this little by little, right? Little by little, just a little bit, a little bit right here. So we're gonna get into some more of this evidence, but there's this very good website, you know, the, the one that we have pointed to already above, because that's one of the few places that we really found a lot of reliable information, right? Um, uh, where's Malcolm X right there? I can see that that's almost like an Ethiopian design behind him. I'm not saying that is, but it looks like it right there. But yes, Malcolm X was didn't just go to Mecca and and Medina, cold Medina, right? But also Addis Ababa, right? That's where he's seen, right? He's seen the show and proof of the OAU. That's where he was inspired, right? That's where he got that inspiration for the OAAU. Um, if we have to say something that, looking at hindsight, they say hindsight is 2020. That was a a um, a tactical or strategic um, mistake or error. It was not listening to those who had begged him to stay in the East a little bit longer. You know, spend some time in the East, right? In, in other words, for Malcolm X to build up an organization, build up an organization. Right, build up. Um, we could say the the um, security. Let's put it like that: the security, right, for himself and his family. I mean, he even brought his family over, right, for a time. Right, you know, the American citizens they could travel on a visa for a time. There were good relationships at that time with you know the United States government, mainly because of the long-standing relationship that Black Americans had established, remember it was black Americans from the insemination of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, right? That, and even during the time before that, during the time of Emperor Menelik II, that had already established those links, that, that dialogue, that diplomacy. The United States government actually rode on black people, black Americans' backs in order to kind of set up political links with Ethiopia. It was we, the black people of the world over here in the Americas and the Caribbean that initially had made those particular links. It was us over here who had made those links, the historical facts there. Anybody want to know more about these particular things? Because some people will hear this and say, oh, 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 oh no, you know, that's not so. That's not so because you have been reading and researching not the wrong information, but information that has been redacted. As we mentioned, Alex Haley's book. In Alex Haley's book about um, the biography of Malcolm X, there's a whole chapter. A whole chapter was redacted from the book. If you really read the book right, and go through the book, you will notice that something is missing. Something is missing, and that particular chapter right there would have exposed it all. Uh, keeping with the bi biographical perspective, you know, like, like autobiography, but a biography of Malcolm X, you know, his life, how, you know, what he did, how he grew up, how he got into the nation of Islam, so forth and so on, how he got more conscious, politically conscious, so forth and so on, and how he started to mature, right, from just, just a kind of... Um, from the civil rights perspective to the human rights. We hear a lot of that talk that Malcolm X was speaking about human rights. Yes, yes, of course. But then that too proves that he was a disciple and had become a disciple of the King of Kings of Ethiopia, of the real black Messiah. You know, upon the throne of David, remember Messiah is a, a, a Hebrew 
concept, right? It's a it's a, a, a Judaic concept, right? We can even say it's a Jewish concept, but we're saying Jewish in the sense of we, the black Jews of the lion of the tribe, tribe, you get it? Tribe, not just a religious conversion, but tribe of Judah, right? So there's so much, you see right over here, we have um, Duke Ellington, mm-hmm. I think even the brother from Shaft also was in Ethiopia as well, right? So during that time, there, there were um, the beginning levels of, of bridge building. There was bridge building between the, the black people right, at home on the continent, especially east of the River Nile, and those in the Americas and the Caribbean, but particularly in this North Country. The North Country. Remember the North Country, according to that prophecy of Genesis chapter 15, right? And Ethiopia. Once again, Amos 9 and 7. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me? Noom Yahweh. Right? Hakadosh Baruchu Baruch Hashem. Sayeth Jehovah. Right? According to Amos 9 and 7. Actually, that word sayeth in the Hebrew is an oracle. Right? That's the oracle. You know about the Matrix movie and hail up Sophia Stewart, the mother of the Matrix, Sophia Stewart, right? <laughs> the Oracle, right? That particular word that's an Oracle right there, we get to see in this particular time, in this particular dispensation, we get to see the, 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 the show and the proof of it. So, who killed Malcolm X? <laughs> that's the question, right? That's, that's been the question. Who killed Malcolm X? You know, was it um, the, the United Snakes, was it, was it the Anglo-Americans, you know, was it, you know, the FBI, was it the, the CIA, you know, was it the intelligence services of the Anglo-American, who killed Malcolm X, right? And, and we know that he was killed, and we know that it was so-called black man's hands on it, but it's, it's almost like, similar to the crucifixion of, of, of Adonai Yeshua, HaMoshiach, the, who the world calls the world calls Jesus Christ, right? It was what Judas Iscariot, right? It was Iscariot. It was his, the boy named Iscariot, right? Judas Iscariot, because there was more than one Judas or Judah, right? But it was Judas Iscariot who was, you could say, so to speak, his hands was on it, right? His 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 hands were dirty in that. So it was black man's hands over here. You know, that went into the, the Audubon ballroom, right, and pulled the trigger, right? But what was the motivation? What was the real motivation? We know part of, part of the motivation, in a sense, has been put out there. But, you know, a lot of the people are not really happy with that. And there's a good reason that a lot of people are not really happy with the little part that they have heard, because that's only half of the story. So what we're here to share is the other half of the story that has not been told until now, right? Because everything in its due time, in its right time. So here, 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 here. Yes, I. Yes, I. Here, here, here. Yeah, Malcolm X. Let's take a, a screenshot of that. I'd like to use that again, right? So the links, the true links between those, we can say, Shemitic, Afro-Shemitic, right, Africans, right, those of Shem. See, we're speaking about the Kevra Neges, right, it's important that we say this. We'll, we'll build on this a little bit, you know, a little bit, a little bit more right here, right. Um, some very good articles right here, but who killed him, you know, who killed Malik al Haj al-Shabazz, right. What is the connection with, um, Ethiopia and 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 the OAU and and please check out this particular page right here um um Sifuwe Baleka Sifuwe Baleka right go over this and it just pause it where you need to pause it right here right um a man who stands for nothing will fall for anything right but it's hard for our people to stand for something when they've been told nothing you can quote me it's hard for black people to stand for something when they've been told and taught nothing, right? In other words, once they're taught, taught nothing, we've been taught certain things, but it's like the half of the story we have not been told. 
we have not been told that Malcolm X had gone to Ethiopia. We had not been told that he was in communication with the King of Kings. We had not been told that the imperial government, the King of Kings government, had earmarked monies in order for him to build the OAAU, right? We had not been told that he was warned even from Ethiopia right by the ethiopians and by others but especially the ethiopian intelligence services that there were ongoing plots i say plots not just one plot but there were plots right against his life right if he had returned and we know what the history know we would know what happened in history that basically he he did return and we we know the results of his returning Right, and what had happened after he had returned, right? But what we don't know is that, yeah.